I'm Amy Henshin, a 4 H Youth Development Educator with the University of Illinois Extension. DuPage, Kane, and Kendall County 4 H wants you to participate in our Bird Identification Challenge. To identify birds, we need to practice our observation skills. Birds come in a wide variety of shapes, colors, and sizes. We use these characteristics, along with behavior and habitat, to help us with bird identification. Let's take a look at a typical bird so we can learn about the main parts or features that a bird has and how we can use these features to help us ID the birds we see. The head is a key area to observe when identifying a bird. On the head, look for different colors and patterns and observe where they appear. Pay special attention to the eyes and the area around the eye. Some birds may have a crown or crest on the top of their head that make them distinct. Bird beaks could be really helpful in identification as they are adapted to the type of food a bird eats. Observe the beak shape and color to help figure out what bird you're looking at. The main body of the bird can be broken into a few main sections, including the back, breast, belly, rump, wings, and tail. Each of these parts of a bird might contain a different color, pattern, or marking that can help identify the bird. You might see stripes, bars, rings, patches, or blocks of color. Note anything distinctive to help you with your identification. Let's get some practice describing the features we see on a bird. How would you describe the bird in the picture to someone to help them identify it? Maybe you'd say, this bird has a black head and a bright orange breast and belly. It has mostly black wings with white stripes. It has a pointy black beak. If someone heard that description and had access to a bird guide, they might be able to identify this bird as a Baltimore Oreo. Now let's try your hand at identifying a bird from these pictures by listening to a description of that bird's features. This bird is mostly green with bright red under its throat and a grayish white breast and has a long, skinny, dark beak. It's this bird, the ruby-throated hummingbird. Did you ID it correctly? Let's try one more. This bird is mostly white and black. It has a greenish black head with a white spot just behind the bill. It has a bright yellow eye. Which bird was it? It's this guy, the common golden eye. Now that we can identify features on a bird, let's learn more about the specific characteristics we can use to help us with bird ID. The first characteristic we can use that we practiced with in the last activity is color pattern. When bird watching, it's important to look closely at the color of the bird. You want to figure out if the bird is mostly one color or another, or what pattern you might see in their colors. You don't need to notice every detail, and you frequently won't have time to do so. You can pay special attention to features that might be a different color than the rest of the bird, such as a red head, a yellow breast, or orange beak. You can also look for patterns like stripes or spots on a certain feature to help with identification. It's important to note that often male and female birds of the same species might have different colors. Northern cardinals and mallards are two common species that are good examples of this phenomenon. The male frequently exhibits bright colors, which help it attract a mate. The female is commonly duller in color to help her blend in with her surroundings, which can help her protect her nest. Birds come in lots of shapes and sizes, from very large vultures to tiny hummingbirds. If you know the shape and size of a few common birds, you can compare other birds to them to help with identification. You can use four common birds, a sparrow, robin, crow, and goose to help you categorize a bird's size. If you aren't already familiar with these birds, try to find them in the wild and pay special attention to their shape and size. Then, when you see a new bird, you can try to picture if it is close in size to one of these species. You might say it's about the size of a robin, or it's smaller than a goose, but bigger than a crow. These types of observations will help you narrow down what type of bird it might be. 
For example, you might see a bird that you think is a type of woodpecker based on other characteristics. If you note that the bird is about the size of a sparrow, it might be a downy woodpecker, the smallest. If you notice that the bird is about the size of a crow, it might be a pileated woodpecker, the largest. As you get more practice identifying birds, you'll start to recognize the silhouettes of various bird types. All of this practice will help you better use shape and size to assist you with bird ID in the future. The place a bird lives is called its habitat. A good habitat will provide four basic needs, food, water, shelter, and space. A bird's shape and size and what the bird eats will determine where its habitat will be located. Some birds live in a location year round, while other birds are only able to find the food they need to eat during the warm spring and summer months, so they will migrate. In Chicagoland, some common bird habitats are prairie, forest, and wetland. Birds that eat a lot of bugs and seeds and like open space will live in the prairie or grassland. This would include birds like bobolinks, bluebirds, and swallows. Birds that eat bugs that live on, in, and around trees and like covered shelter will live in the woods or forest. This would include birds like Oreos and woodpeckers. Birds that eat insects or seeds from plants that live near or in water will live in wetlands. Wetland birds include red-winged blackbirds, warblers, and ducks. You can use the habitat you find a bird and the physical location to help you narrow down what type of bird it's likely to be. Bird guides will have habitat information and range maps that show which birds are likely to be in which parts of the country at various times of year. Compare your observations with this info to identify your bird. The last characteristic we'll use to help us identify birds is how birds act, which is called behavior. Behavior includes the way a bird sits, flies, eats, moves, acts, or sings. By looking at these behaviors, you might find something that helps you narrow down the type of bird it might be. For example, if you observe a bird standing on the side of a tree tapping to find food, you might be looking at a woodpecker or related bird. If you hear a bird song that sounds like they are saying, hey, sweetie, you might have found a black-capped chickadee. If you see a bird silhouette soaring high in the air looking for food, you might be looking at a type of hawk or vulture. The more practice you get birding, the more easily you'll be able to associate different behaviors with bird families or specific species. One special note relating to behavior. If you have a great ear, you might want to spend time investing in learning bird calls. Oftentimes, you'll hear a bird before you see it. Frequently, you might only hear the bird and never catch a glimpse. In these instances, knowing bird calls, which are often quite distinct, can get you an ID. Now that you know the characteristics you can use to help you identify a bird, you need to find a bird guide that you can reference to apply them. There are numerous free bird guides online and a number that can be downloaded to your phone or tablet. There are also good old fashioned guidebooks. Depending on the type of guide, you may find various pictures of the bird, information on range and habitat, clips of that bird's calls, and notes on behavior. Find a guide that fits your needs and get familiar with how to use it so that you can increase your odds of a successful bird identification. Visit our website, go.illinois.edu stem4hdkk to check out our video on birding tips, download the bird identification challenge materials, which include bird guide recommendations, and then get out bird watching. If you want to explore any of the topics from this video in more depth, check out the links in the video description for additional resources from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Happy birding!